finishing confessions of a former mm. bastard cop. Now, once again, these are his words, not mine. I am reading from his document. One final idea. Consider abolishing the police. I know what you're thinking. What? We need the police. They protect us. As someone who did it for nearly a decade, I need you to understand that, by and large, police protection is marginal and incidental. It is an illusion created by decades of propaganda, as he calls it, designed to fool you into thinking that these brave men and women are holding back the barbarians at the gates. He should have really put that in quotes. These brave men and women are holding back the barbarians at the gates. That's the illusion, folks. That's what we've talked about over the last several episodes. Police do not protect anyone. They show up after the fact. They are not stopping any violence from occurring. They show up to arrest and potentially punish the person who commits violence, but they do not protect you from violence and never can. They have never done that. They never can do that. The only one that can ever protect you from violence is you. By studying martial arts, carrying a firearm, learning situational awareness, engaging in true common sense and personal responsibility, period, the end for all time. No one else can protect you. No one can get to your body quicker than you. Having understood this for the longest time, that is why I am trained in martial arts and I carry a firearm in public. That's it. That's what mitigates my chances for being harmed. Because I know how to handle myself physically, and in addition to that, if I'm outnumbered, outnumbered and I don't have to go to deadly, and I do have to go to deadly force, I carry a firearm. That's it. And that's what everyone should have the capabilities of. Man, woman, and I would say even children should be learning that until they become responsible as an adult. That's it. Even children should be learning martial arts for sure. That's called the right, the inherent natural right of self-defense, which is shared by all human beings. All human beings have that inherent right. That being said, let's go back to the reading. I alluded to this above. The vast majority of calls for service I handled were theft reports, burglary reports, domestic arguments that hadn't escalated into violence, loud parties, houseless people loitering. I like his use of the term houseless. They're not homeless people. They have no house. They need a house. Okay? Houseless people loitering, traffic collisions, very minor drug possession, arguments and arguments between neighbors. Mostly the mundane ups and downs of life in the community, with little inherent danger. And like I mentioned, the vast majority of crimes I responded to, even violent ones, had already happened. My unaccountable license to kill was irrelevant. What I mainly provided was a quote-unquote objective third party with the authority to document property damage, ask people to chill out or disperse, or counsel people not to beat each other up. A trained counselor or a conflict resolution specialist would be ten times more effective than someone with a gun strapped to his hip wondering if anyone would try to kill him when he showed up. There are many models for community safety that can be explored if we get away from the idea that the only way to be safe is to have a man with an M4 rifle prowling your neighborhood ready at a moment's notice to write down your name and birthday after you've been robbed and beaten. You might be asking, what about the armed robbers, the gangsters, the drug dealers, the serial killers? And yes, in the city I worked, I regularly broke up gang parties, found gang members carrying guns, and handled homicides. I've seen some tragic things. From a reformed gangster shot in the head with his brains oozing out, to a 15-year-old boy taking his last breath in his screaming mother's arms, thanks to a gang member's bullet. I know the wages of violence. This is where we have to have the courage to ask, why do people rob? Why do they join gangs? Why do they get addicted to drugs or sell them? Once again, folks, stepping out of the reading briefly, what have we talked about from day one here on Water and Earth is happening? Why is this show different than all of the other podcasts out there? Causal factors. Root level causal factors in psychology and philosophy. Garbage goes in, 
in the form of information, and then it is believed culturally, garbage will come out in the form of behavior, and it will make everybody's living experience hell. That's a simple equation when it comes to the human condition. That is not what human nature is. Human nature, as we are going to talk about extensively, probably on the next series of shows that I do, is that human beings are programmable through information. That is why the controllers of the world have to give people either a limited set of informations and variables to consider, or they have to outright hide the information that people do need to know to come to an informed decision and then understand what they should act, how they should act, what they should do. Okay? If you don't have that prerequisite information in the form of knowledge, you are not going to understand what that information means, and then you are not going to be able to base your behavior accordingly. Garbage goes in, garbage comes out. You could look at it as garbage or incomplete data goes in, then garbage behavior is going to come out. So if garbage in the form of information goes into the person, that is what is going to inform their decision-making and their behavior. Continuing with the reading. This is not because people are inherently evil. He understands this, and I'm glad to see that he does. I submit to you that these are the results of living in a capitalist system, and that's where I disagree. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the result of living in a capitalist system. It is the result of living in a satanic system. Let's not conflate the two or confuse them. We are not even living in a capitalist model at all. We are living in crony capitalism, which paves the way to socialism and communism ultimately. Sometimes it paves the way to fascism. Right now, the public has bought socialism hook, line, and sinker, and that is the stepping stone through the crony corporatist environment that we have toward going to complete communism, getting people to bite the bait of socialism. I've talked about this ad nauseum on what on earth is happening and explain how it works politically. I think if you don't understand that, again, you're very naive or you have an incomplete data set and you don't have the information that you require to come to that con correct conclusion. I would recommend reading the book, None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen. And I would also recommend the book, The Grand Chessboard by Carol Quigley and the book Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley. Then you'll understand how it really works from the horse's mouth. And very few people have ever read, read those books. So they have an incomplete data set. And it's not just those books, it's hundreds of others. Sometimes it's right from the white papers of the people conducting the control freak behavior that are telling you how they did it. I've told people many times on my show, the Satanists that I worked with in the what other people might call covens or secret societies, they were called grottos, in the groups that I work with, we're all too happy to tell you. We already control things. We own the police and the military. They're our pets. They'll do anything we command them to do, like loyal dog servants. And this is what they call them out in the open, blatantly, you know. And uh, they were perfectly and completely open about that in private. Okay? Yeah, th this is the book right here. Check this one out, folks, if you haven't read it yet. If you don't understand what's written in this book, you understand very little about what's going on in the 3D world that we are living in today. None dare call it conspiracy by the former Senator Gary Allen. Okay? Written in the year 1970. Seven zero. I wasn't born when this book was written. And now all the things that were talked about it today are coming true. Everything. See, he doesn't discriminate. He's got the hammer and sickle as part of it. He's got the dollar as part of it. He's got, you know, the uh, Chinese star as part of it. You know, he's got the the, the, the communist the, uh, symbol that they use in, in Black Lives Matter here with the raised fist. He's got the UN symbol. He's got it all. He's got it all. It's all part of it. They control all of the sides, folks. It's a dialectic. I've, I've asked people at my own lectures who's read that book. You know, three hands go up in the room. It's pathetic. It's unacceptable. I've told people it's unacceptable. 
that you think you're informed and you haven't read non Dare Call Conspiracy. You're not informed. You have a, a halfway understanding uh, in your opinion at best. You know, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it anymore. I'm going to tell people when they're ignorant. You're, if you ever read that book, you're pretty damn ignorant. You don't really understand how it works. You would have been drawn to that book if you were looking in the right places. This is part of the problem. People aren't even looking in the right places. You know, I, I, I say it to people all the time, and it can sound as egotistical as you want to hear it. I People who say, I really know what's going on in the world, and then somebody says, yeah, do you know the work of Mark Passio? Do you know the work of David Icke? Do you know the work of Jordan Maxwell? Do you know the work of Michael Tessarion? Do you know the work of Gary Allen? Do you know... The work Carol Quigley put out there. Do you know know the work of Manly P. Hall? And everybody goes, who the hell are any of those people? I don't care how egotistical it sounds. If you haven't come across my work by this point, you're not looking in the right places. Okay? If you haven't heard of the work of the men I just mentioned, you're not looking in the right places. You think you know, but you don't really know. It's called, you've sipped at the Pyrian Spring. Not slipped, you have sipped. You've taken a tiny little sip like this. Here's here's the fount of here's the eternal fount of knowledge called the Pyrian Spring with all the knowledge in it. And you've done this. You've gone. Listen. Here's what happened. Yeah, I admit I don't I don't know anything. I'm the potential candidate or initiate, right? Who's who's trying to learn how the world works. And you're going. I admit I don't know that much, right? So here's all the knowledge that could be available. And here's what you're doing. Oh, yeah, now I know it all. Now I, I got it. I'm enlightened. I know what's going on in the world. Instead of doing this. Now maybe you know a thing or two. Maybe. Maybe you need ten of these. Maybe you need a thousand. Then you'll know a thing or two. Most people do the first thing. They take a tiny little sip, and then they think they understand and there's the old saying, a little learning is a dangerous thing. Drink deeply or taste not the Pyrian spring. There, shallow drafts will intoxicate the brain, but only drinking largely will sober us again. That means you're going to be drunk with the illusion of knowledge if you take a little sip and you stop there. Again, in the Eastern tradition, this was what was called meeting the Buddha on the road to enlightenment. That means that he's a false Buddha, and you are at a level of false enlightenment. You'll meet the Buddha at the end of the path, when you really are enlightened, and understand what's really going on. And if you haven't come to the total conclusion that the world is operating on a satanic agenda, and it is a slavery system, then you have not drunk deeply from the Pyrian Spring. You're drunk on the illusion of knowledge and the illusion of being awake. This is what the people who are calling themselves woke are. The woke movement. You know, it's an illusion of being awakened. True awakening, study the 20 points that I put forward in an entire seminar called Streetwise Spirituality. Streetwise spirituality. You know? Not being wishy washy or new agey or woo woo about it. No. Getting it uh, to a deep level of understanding and being street smart about it. That's what it means to be really truly awakened. Look at those 20 points of awakening and then let's talk about what enlightenment is. So let's go back to the reading. I submit to you that these are the results of living in a capitalist system and that and that grinds that grinds people down and denies them housing, medical care, human dignity, and a say in their government. These are the results of white supremacy pushing people to the margins, excluding them, disrespecting them, and treating their bodies as disposable. Once again, we don't have a white supremacist society, we have a satanic elitist society. We have an occultocracy. An occultocracy, meaning rule by the occult, rule by the hidden elite. And you know what, folks? If you don't believe me, take it right from their mouth, right from their words. 
go watch the interviews that I talked about in Demystifying the Occult Part 2, Satanism and the Dark Occult, an interview with Anton LaVey's former grandson. You know, I, might, I don't even know if he is not married to Zena LaVey anymore, but Nicholas Schreck was interviewed uh, on cable access by a white supremacist, by the way, who asked him, what would the world look like if you, as Satanists, were in control of it? What would you do differently? And he said, oh, no, no, you quite misunderstand. We already are in control. We want the world more radically transformed into our vision of what it should be and look like. But make no mistake, we already are in control of it. We are just going to tighten and refine our control of the world. That was Nicholas Schreck's answer to Tom Metzer in that interview that I gave in that presentation. Go back and watch it again. Maybe we'll play it, you know, to show people, hey, here's how it really works. These people are all too comfortable in telling you how they operate from the shadows. So he's trying to put this uh, saying it's to blame by capitalism and white supremacy and these are just divide and conquer tactics, ladies and gentlemen. They're not going to teach you who's really in the realm of true elitist power. You want to learn that? Go read Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley. Then you'll know who's really in power. And he says the exact same thing that I say from having been involved in it at a low... I was involved in it at a low level. Carol Quigley was involved in it at a high level. And we both say the same exact things. It's a complex, interconnected network of people who know all of the workings of the human mind, human psychology, and know how to manipulate it. They're master manipulators of psychology. Same exact thing he says I've been saying for years. He wrote that book almost over 100 years ago, I think. Okay? And then what does he say about that it is like a cult? It is like a religious group, a secret society, however you want to look at it. And it has no name. Well, I said it a million times here on What on Earth is Happening. It is a cult with no name. If you think they call themselves the Illuminati, you have drunk shallowly from the Pyrian Spring. First of all, that word is a ridiculous word to use in relation to these psychopaths. They are not illuminates of anything. In the, the 